People dug out Santa Claus from an ancient mountain, who turned out to be a horned monster. Now they have to blow him up before he eats all the children. Today we will recap the 2010 movie Rare Exports. The story takes place in Finnish Lapland. This all starts 24 days before Christmas. The American company Sub-Zero Incorporated is drilling on top of the Corvatunchuri Hill. A concerned foreman, Mr. Green, arrives at the office of the manager, Mr. Riley. Green tells him that at a depth of 400 meters, they found sawdust among the rock and clay. At first Green thought that workers had drilled through old wood inside the mountain, but it turns out that the layer of this sawdust is nearly 20 meters thick. This is a highly unusual phenomenon, but the astonished Riley finds an explanation for it. In the old days, people used to store ice by wrapping sawdust around it. This means that the Corvatunchuri Sopa is a giant refrigerator, where something mysterious is stored in a block of ice. Riley knows what is inside and demands that the drilling continue. He gives Green a safety memo, which, among other things, instructs him to wash behind his ears. The foreman thinks this is a joke, but Riley looks serious and even aggressive. Near the office, two local boys, Pietari and Yuso, are hiding among the crates. The kids are curious to watch the drilling operations, but they are strictly forbidden to come here, so they secretly eavesdrop and peep on what is going on. Meanwhile, the workers continue drilling and indeed find a block of ice under the sawdust. Green hands the piece of ice block to Riley, and the latter looks at the find with delight. Always believe. The superintendent then steps onto the platform and solemnly announces to the workers that his childhood dream is about to come true. Corvatunchuri Sopa is the largest mound in the world. The people of Lapland have been building it for centuries. Now the workers have 24 days to open the mound. Riley even lets them use dynamite to do it. Yuso understands a little English and translates to Pietari that the hill is about to be blown up. After this, the boys quickly descend from the mountain and leave the forbidden area through a hole in the fence, which they made themselves. Pietari, the youngest of the boys, assumes that Santa Claus is buried inside the mountain. But the boy cannot believe that Santa is gone, for he comes every year. Yuso laughs at his friend and says that Santa does not exist, and that on Christmas, all children are greeted by a local man named Pai Paranin. At this time there is an explosion at the top of Corvatunchuri, and the boys look up at the mountain in amazement. In the evening, Pietari finds many books about Santa Claus at home and begins to read them. The illustrations depict Santa as an evil horned creature with a rod in his hands. The books say that Santa walks barefoot in the snow, beats naughty children and boils them in a cauldron. So the time flies by, and Christmas is just one day away. In the morning, Pietari's father, named Rauno, sharpens wooden stakes and drives them into the ground inside a rather deep hole. Then he covers the hole with spruce branches and snow and hangs a lure over it. The result is a wolf trap near his yard. Rauno then walks up to the house and yells to Pietari that it's time to get up. The boy's room is filled with books about Santa. He himself stayed up all night, sitting by the window, afraid to fall asleep, but dozed off in the morning. His father's shout and a snowball in the window wake Pietari up. The boy jumps up abruptly and regrets that he dozed off and became vulnerable to the evil Santa. Pietari then tapes up the last window on the advent calendar so he won't open it. The kid is afraid of Christmas. Looking out the window, the boy notices barefoot footprints on the porch canopy. This frightens Pietari and he wants to talk to his father. Rauno is working in his slaughterhouse at this time, and the boy is afraid to go in. Finally, he closes his eyes and goes inside to see his father. Pietari asks if Rauno has been walking on the roof. He has done nothing of the sort. He asks Pietari to fantasize less and sends him home to get dressed, for soon they will go reindeer herding. The boy realizes that it is Santa walking on the roof and watching him. Soon the family is off to meet the other reindeer herders. Rauno gives his son a loaded gun for the first time and walks closer to the corral. Yuso is also here. Pietari informs his friend that Santa Claus has been walking under his window at night, but Yuso mocks him. A reindeer herder named Pai Paranen says that the explosions on the mountain might have spooked the wolves, so they need to be careful while herding the reindeer. None of the adults know what is really going on at the top of Corvatunchuri. Around that point, the reindeer begin to come up to the pen. People are getting ready to hunt, because they need to turn over the meat to be sold to earn money. But apart from the two young deer, no others are in sight. Rauno realizes that something has happened to the herd. Then he, Pai Paranen, Yuso and Pietari get on their snowmobiles and go in search of the reindeer. Near the fence enclosing Corvatunchuri, the company finds the herd, which for some reason has perished. A man named Amo, also a reindeer herder and Yuso's father, waits for them at the fence. 
he has discovered the hole in the fence that Pietari and Yuso made to climb the Corbatunchuri sometimes in secret. The men suspect that particularly dangerous wolves have broken out from behind the fence and wiped out the deer. No one knows that the hole was made by the boys, and now they have to keep quiet. The reindeer herders count the carcasses and realize they're in for $85,000. It's a huge amount, and now the reindeer herders could go bankrupt. Pietari examines one of the reindeer and notices a barefoot mark under it. The boy realizes that it was the hungry Santa who wiped out the herd. An enraged Rauno and his friends decide to break into the fenced-off area and deal with representatives of the drilling company. By evening, the men arrive at the top of the mountain and break into the office with guns, but no one is there. Obviously, the men have left the place in a hurry. Piatari finds a diagram on the wall of the burial site inside the mountain and realizes that the workers have dug up Santa. The others gather around the huge hole and are perplexed as to what work has been done here. Rauno throws a flare at the bottom of the hole, but they still can't see anything. The group goes home. Frustrated, Rauno decides to roast meat for the Christmas table, and Piatari seals the last window in the advent calendar with a stapler. Yuso, who is sitting at his house, does not understand his friend's misgivings. Piatari puts on a hockey uniform to be better protected from the evil Santa Claus, and shows Yuso drawings from the books. They show Santa in true devilish form. Piatari then shows the diagram he stole from the office at the mountain. From the books, the boy learns that once upon a time, the people of Lapland grew weary of the terrible Santa and decided to do away with him. They lured the villain onto an ice that broke beneath him. When the lake completely froze over, Santa was trapped in the ice. Then the inhabitants pulled out this huge chunk of ice and buried him under a huge rock pile. The resulting mountain was called Corvatunchuri. Yuso only laughs at this story. But Pietari understands the danger and wants to tell his father that they made the hole in the fence. Yuso is adamantly against it, for his parents would not forgive them for it. Soon he goes home, and Pietari goes down to his father's kitchen. Rauno gives his son gingerbread and milk for supper and lights candles. But the man is not in a festive mood. Pietari says that the gingerbread turned out delicious, just like his mother's. For some reason the woman had passed away several years ago, and the memory of her does not improve Rauno's mood. Piatari asks if he has been an obedient boy and if his father would be upset if he disappeared. In response Rauno sends the boy to bed. Finally, he wishes his son a Merry Christmas and furtively wipes away his tears caused by the memories and current problems. That night, Piatari is not going to sleep. He sits by the window and takes a bunch of keys in his hand. If the boy falls asleep, the keys will fall and clatter loudly on the floor. That sound will wake Piatari up. All the same, the keys fall, yet the boy falls asleep. Just before that, something happened at Corvatunchuri. The alarmed foreman Green contacted the manager by radio and demanded that a helicopter be sent urgently to evacuate. The cargo that had been extracted from the mountain turned out to be a living creature, and it terrified all the workers. But Riley's manager, who had flown away earlier, saw no problem and demanded that the cargo be handed over to him. As they were talking, someone appeared along the mountain and wiped out all the workers. Soon Green was horrified to see a creature with bare feet in front of him. Christmas is coming. Rauno takes the burnt meat out of the oven and shoves it back in with frustration. Then he tries to heat the fireplace, but there is a pop and a cloud of soot flies into his face. Piatari wakes up to his father screaming and runs to his aid. The frightened Rauno, armed with a chair, checks the fireplace. It turns out that Piatari has put a trap for Santa in it. Rauno thinks it is a stupid joke and wants to ground his son. But Piatari does go outside and flinches in fear at what he sees. There is no bait over the wolf trap. At the boy's screams Rauno comes running in and slowly approaches the trap. Looking into the hole, he first finds bird feathers, but a little deeper lies a man. The man jumps up and pulls the curious Piatari away. Rauno tries to pretend that everything is normal and does not allow his son to look into the hole. The family returns to the house. Piatari eats breakfast and demands to go back to the trap, but Rauno tells him to calm down. Soon Pai Paranin, dressed as Santa Claus, arrives to wish the boy a Merry Christmas. But Rauno intercepts his friend in the street and asks for help. Piatari overhears the adults talking and decides to follow them. He sees Rauno and Pai Paranin dragging something large in a bag across the yard. The men bring their load to the slaughterhouse and lay it out on the table. It turns out to be a decrepit, bearded old man. In his jacket pocket is an American passport in the name of Ryan Green, the foreman from the mountain. Rauno doesn't know what to do. On the one hand, the old man is wrong to break into his yard, but on the other hand, it is illegal to build wolf pits. After thinking it over, the men decide to get rid of the old man and cover their tracks. Meanwhile, Piatari, left unattended, runs to the wolf trap and hops into it. At the bottom of the pit he finds a sack with a frightening doll inside. Rauno and Pai Paranin sharpen their knives in the slaughterhouse and get down to business. But then the old man abruptly jerks his hand away. It turns out he is alive. The old man begins to actively move his nostrils as if sniffing out something. At this time, Piatari goes to the window of the slaughterhouse and watches what is going on inside. Rauno notices his son and runs out into the street to catch him and take him inside. 
but the boy quickly runs off in the direction of the highway. Rauno gets in his car and follows Piatari. At the highway, the man spots the sheriff's car and sees his son getting into it. Rauno curses and goes after the police. The sheriff stops at Amo's house. Here everyone gets out of their cars, and the sheriff reports that strange things have been happening all day today. Rauno, with his head down, says that he and Piatari are fine. Just then, Amo comes out of the house and leads everyone gathered to his barn. Several hundred sacks of potatoes had been stolen from him. For some reason, the potatoes have been emptied out of them. The sheriff looks around the barn in amazement and informs them that tonight there were stoves and heaters stolen from almost every house. The burglars weren't shy about breaking down walls to get into the houses. Amo's wife's hair dryer was also stolen. The angry man thinks that representatives of the American company stole all these appliances and will use them to create some technology. Rauno thinks that on that optimistic note, he and his son should leave, but Piatari doesn't listen and goes to Yuso's room. Thinking his friend is still asleep, the boy goes to his bed and discovers under the blanket the same scary doll as the one in the wolf pit. Piatari grabs the doll, runs outside, and informs the men that Yuso has been taken. The sheriff assumes that Yuso has gone to see a girl and will be back soon. The rest of the men also have no time to worry about the teenager. The sheriff leaves, and Rauno asks Amo to go to the slaughterhouse and speak to the uninvited guest in English. Rauno still believes that the strange old man is a worker for the American company, and of all the adults in the village, only Amo knows English. Meanwhile, Pai Perinen keeps an eye on the old man, munching on a Christmas gingerbread. The old man sniffs again, as if he smells a treat. Pai Perinen teases him, and the elderly man begins to make unintelligible noises. When the man leans closer, the old man jumps on him violently. <laughs> Rauno, Piatari and Amo arrive at the slaughterhouse. A frightened Pai Perinen meets them on the doorstep. He puts a handkerchief to his bitten ear. Piatari goes into the house and the men examine Pai Perinen's wound. The injured man thinks it is better not to enter the slaughterhouse at all, because the intruder does not behave like a human being. However, the friends do not listen to him and still run inside. The naked old man, hunched over, sits in a corner and looks ominous. The friends attribute the strangeness of the guest to the fact that he is a foreigner. Amo points his rifle at him, comes closer and at first asks neutral questions. The old man remains silent and does not even look at his companion. Rauno decides to back up his friend and pokes the old man with a stick, but he still doesn't react. Then Amo gets up, sits down with the old man and loudly declares that they need money. At home, Piatari calls the parents of all his friends. It turns out that none of the children have been home all day. The boy tries not to show alarm, but the children's disappearance from the village keeps him busy. At the slaughterhouse, the old man is questioned using a broom, but he remains unconcerned. Amo believes that the guest is only pretending to be deaf in order to be pitied and let go, but the men intend to hold the guest hostage until the American company pays a ransom for him. Then there is a knock at the door. It is Piatari, who wants to talk to his father. Smelling the boy's scent, the old man turns towards the door. <laughs> Rauno runs out to the threshold. Piatari brings a twig and asks that his father spank him for being a disobedient child, and especially because he and Yuso made a hole in the fence next to the ill-fated mountain. Rauno doesn't understand anything. Then Piatari tries to explain that Santa took all the children away for being naughty. Their conversation is interrupted by Pai Perinen, who asks Rauno to return to the slaughterhouse. It turns out that the crazy old man has chewed through the broom. Everyone retreats in horror from him. The curious Piatari enters the room. Seeing him, the old man rises to his feet. Rauno grabs his son and brings him closer to the old man. Then the boy explains that the old man is the evil Santa Claus, who has come to kidnap all the children. The adults finally believe Piatari and realize that this fiend has been dug out of Corvatunchuri Mountain. The old man prepares to attack the boy. Then the men point their guns at the villain and decide to tie him up. They succeed. Now the old man is disarmed, and the group watches over him, munching on Christmas gingerbread. Suddenly, a radio comes on in the jacket the old man stole from the foreman green on the mountain. It's Riley's manager checking in. He doesn't yet know what happened on top of Corvatunchuri and thinks his workers are alright. Riley informs him that a helicopter is coming to the mountain in half an hour and asks him to get Santa ready to load. But our heroes have other plans. They tell Riley that they are ready to take Santa to the mountain and sell him. The friends dress the old man in the Santa Claus outfit that Pai Perinen arrived in this morning, put him in a cage and take him to Corvatunchuri. The whole way, the old man looks at Piatari as a prey. The adults, meanwhile, decide how much to sell Santa for. They need at least $85,000 to pay off the reindeer debt. After arriving at the mountain, the men get out of the car. Amo finds his wife's hair dryer on the ground and wonders how it got there. His musings are interrupted by a helicopter, from which Mr. Riley emerges. Amo does not speak English well, so Riley has no idea where his men have gone and why strange Finns with rifles demand $85,000 from him. 
To clarify the situation, the friends roll out a cage with the old man in the Santa suit. Riley gets close to him and touches his beard with interest. While the adults are busy, Piatari gets out of the car and makes his way to the big hangar. The old man in the cage raises his head and looks directly at Riley. Suddenly his eyes begin to glow ominously. Riley immediately twitches and asks the Finns to put their guns down and smile as broadly as possible. It turns out that the old man in the cage is not Santa, but one of his elves. The men do not understand much and continue to demand money. Suddenly, the lights on the mountain go out and the helicopter pilot disappears with screams. Riley says that Santa will now look for the naughtiest. The friends cock their guns and see that they are surrounded on all sides by scary naked old men, Christmas elves. They prepare to defend their master. The elves quickly eliminate Riley and approach the other men. Here Rano notices that Pietari is missing. Firing back at the elves, the men run into the hangar and find the boy there. They close the doors and immediately see something terrifying. In the middle of the hangar in a block of ice sits a huge creature with horns. It is Santa Claus. The elves have stolen stoves and heaters from the villagers, then brought them to the master's lair and turned them on to melt the ice. Pretty soon it would melt and the monster would break free. There are many bags lying beside the ice, from which children's voices are heard. The elves have gathered the children for their master, so that he can punish them when he wakes up. Yuso is among them. When he hears his father's voice, he begins to cry and asks to be rescued. Amo rushes to the sacks and tries to find his son. At the same time, the elves begin to break down the door from outside. Ai Paranen and Rauno turn off the stoves and heaters and try to barricade the entrance to the hangar with them. Amo finds Yuso and hugs him. At this point, the ice block cracks badly, but Santa can't get out yet. Pai Perinen shouts in terror that no one will make it out of here alive, and the others also fuss in panic. Pietari alone stays calm and develops a rescue plan. Examining the hangar, he notices a hole in the roof. The boy gets an idea and tries to shout out to everyone, but they can't hear him. The adults make a tremendous noise, and the children in the bags are crying. Then Pietari fires a shotgun. The boy says that as long as the children are here, the elves won't leave the hangar alone, but Santa must be destroyed. Dynamite, which is stored in the hangar, can be used for this purpose. Then everyone acts according to Pietari's plan. Pai Perinen knows how to fly a helicopter, so he carefully comes out of the hangar with bundles of gingerbread and distributes them to the elves. The elves immediately forget everything else and greedily pounce on the treat. Taking advantage of their confusion, Pai Perinen runs to the helicopter, takes off and communicates with Pietari using the radio found in the hangar. All the children in the bags are put into the cargo net. Through a hole in the roof of the hangar, the friends hook the net to the helicopter. Piatari also grabs the netting, because all the children must be together for the plan to work. Rauno and Amo must stay in the hangar and do their part. They look with admiration at Piatari flying away and can't believe that such a little boy is telling them what to do. The helicopter with the load rises and the net with the children flies away from the mountain. Piatari then commands Pai Perinen to hover over the forest and hunt down the elves. Those villains should be able to smell that the children have left the hangar and go after them. And so they do. The hordes of elves run through the woods after the helicopter. The next step in the plan is to use the children as bait to lead the elves to the empty deer pen and close them in. At this point, Amo and Rauno stay in the hangar and drill holes in the ice block around Santa. The men insert dynamite into the resulting holes. After admiring their creation, they decide to make a little Christmas present for themselves. With a chainsaw, the men cut down the horns of the monster and want to take them with them as a souvenir. Perhaps they can sell the horns for a profit later. Meanwhile, the helicopter flies up to the reindeer pen. The elves will be here soon, but a problem arises, the gates of the enclosure are closed. There is no time to change the plan, so Pietari decides to go down to the pen and open the gate himself. But because of the hanging net Pai Perinen can't land the helicopter to pick up the boy later. And in the enclosure, the elves can harm him badly. However, Pietari does not care, he decides to sacrifice himself. Not listening to Pai Perinen's reasoning, the boy jumps off the netting onto the pole, descends into the corral, and opens the heavy door for the elves. They are close. Piatari turns on the electricity to keep the fence energized so the elves can't get out. The boy then asks Pai Perinen to tell Rauno of his feet and prepares to meet the elves. The angry creatures run into the enclosure and head straight for Piatari. The boy is wildly terrified, so he closes his eyes and thinks of his father. At the same time, Amo and Rauno get into the car and drive away from the hangar containing Santa. Once they have driven a safe distance away, Rauno presses the button on the detonator and remotely blows up the building. The hangar and the horn monster are blown to pieces. The stunned Rauno looks at the explosion and congratulates himself on Christmas. Still in the pen, Pietari opens his eyes and realizes that the elves are not going to attack him. They only stand helplessly and look around. A joyful Pai Perinen chuckles as he looks at the explosion on the mountain. 
He then tells Piatari over the radio that Santa has been destroyed, which means the elves are now out of a job. Piatari is happy that his plan worked and nobody except the villains were hurt. The boy then asks Paiparanen to take the children home, for they should be in their beds by now at this time. The helicopter flies off to the village, and Piatari admires the snowfall. At dawn, the three adult friends and Yuso arrive at the reindeer pen. Here Piatari is waiting for them. He has closed the elves and counted them, and there are 198 of them. The boy thinks they can be sold for a profit by passing them off as Santa Clauses. Rauno offers to charge $85,000 for one Santa. Amo asks his son to quickly calculate what the profit will be for all the Santas. According to the calculations, it turns out to be about 17 million. Rauno cannot contain his feelings, approaches his son and embraces him. They admire each other's bravery, admiring the trapped elves and the beautiful sunrise from behind the mountains. The holidays pass and the next year arrives. There are 312 days until Christmas. The friends corral the humble elves into showers and force them to bathe. 76 days before Christmas, the elves are taught to hold children in their arms, stroke them on the head, and hand them presents. The whole group takes part in the training. Rauno hugs Piatari and shows the old men how to handle the baby properly. Amo oversees their discipline. He puts a festive cap on the heads of the particularly successful students. It's a rite of passage for the Santa Clauses. 24 days before Christmas, the friends put the newly made Santas in boxes and prepare to sell them to different countries. Aiparanen now has a cargo plane and is getting ready to take off with the Santas on board. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Write about it in the comments and if you like the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.